Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to do a quick introduction to Rhino's parametric modeling uh, plugin, uh, Grasshopper. So, uh, if you're using Rhino 7, um, you can find uh, Grasshopper under Tools, Grasshopper, or you can type into the command bar. It has been actually um, added to uh, Rhino functions. And before I get into um, why we need parametric modeling, uh, let's take into account how we actually model things in uh, in the Rhino environment. So uh, let's let's say that we are going to model a tube um, or some sort of um, circular geometry. We can start with a circle, for instance. And um, you can when you hover over the circle function, you can see that it takes in two inputs, center and radius. So the center is basically where we want to place the uh, circle and the radius is the parameter uh, for it. Uh, so we can also consider these as two inputs. Uh, when I click on the circle, uh, let's say we want this to be at the origin, um, and it's asking for a center of circle, I can enter zero, and um, we need a radius, so let's say we enter five. And if I want to turn this into a tube, then I can do extrude curve, and I can enter height. So let's say our height is 20. And this is the, the way I modeled this, uh, basically. There's also a, a, a tube uh, function here, so it's a cylinder. We can also use this, uh, by the way. Uh, let's actually uh, show you how to do that as well. So if you go here, uh, base of the cylinder um, is going to be um, basically the origin. Uh, we can enter the base radius and the height is going to be 20. All right, so that's the, um, that's the cylinder geometry. Basically, we did three inputs, um, a point specifying the plane of origin, a radius for the base, and a height for the extrusion. Now, uh, let's say I want to model another circle, um, another cylinder, uh, then I have to basically repeat um, these functions, right? So every time I can input a different um, different input and I'll get a different uh, type of cylinder, different height, different radius. Uh, essentially what we are doing here is uh, in its core is parametric modeling itself because we are entering parameters and we're getting an output. Uh, but there is something more here that Grasshopper can do uh, which is basically create uh, this as a relationship of parameters so that we don't actually have to uh, model anything in Rhino, it could it could just be a virtual model. So um, let's actually do this in Grasshopper and uh, to try to understand how it's going to work. Um, now, if I want to create a cylinder, I can just double click here and type in anything I want. So let's say we want to create a cylinder. Uh, now, this is uh, basically a, a script that is running the cylinder function in Rhino. And uh, the plugin's name is normally located in the middle. On the left, we have the inputs, and on the right, we have the output. Um, so the input is a base plane, uh, radius, and height. Basically, those were the essential inputs we actually gave when we run the function. So uh, the base plane, uh, normally, if you don't specify anything, it will be the origin. Uh, radius, let's enter five. So I'm going to double click and type in a number here that will automatically create a number slider. And uh, now you can see that we have created a cylinder um, with these inputs. But what's different is that we can actually select this geometry in Rhino. Uh, it's because it's generated in uh, Grasshopper and this is actually uh, what we call as a meta model. So it's basically um, storing some sort of geometric or other types of algorithmic uh, relationships or parameters. And it's just visualizing an instance of what the script is executing. So if I were to change any of these inputs, you can see that the model itself is changing. So um, we can actually con consider different types of uh, inputs for this as well. Um, or model this as a geometry, then all I have to do is uh, select the plugin or go to the output, right click and bake. And it will ask for uh, a layer and we can just bake it into a layer. Now the um, the cylinder function was already solid object, that's why uh, the, 
the solid forms they were actually kept um, in grasshopper this is not included but what we can do is actually cap the resulting geometry with cap holes and that will basically uh, generate uh, a closed uh, cylinder for us and now if I want to um, basically change the geometry all I have to do is change these parameters so that's essentially um, the fundamental uh, aspect of uh, parametric modeling so basically we can actually uh, change uh, or build these sorts of relationships and these relationships could be as complex as you want them to be right I'm just showing you kind of the simplest way of uh, generating some object uh, but to um, to summarize what I'm what I was trying to to tell is basically in Rhino we have um, when we model something it's actually uh, created as a model there's no parameter associated to it uh, we can just uh, probably scale it parametric relationships are established and um, we can actually virtually change the the topology of the model or change the inputs and then we can bake an instance right so this will be output of the script itself so um, again the grasshopper script is virtual we cannot select it until that geometry is baked and when it's baked um, that will be created as an instance and it will be output so this geometry is actually disconnected from the script right so this is now uh, almost working like a parametric machine and it can output as many variations as we want it to be so um, that's basically essentially uh, what grasshopper is about now um, I'm going to get into uh, more specifics about what else uh, we can do in Grasshopper and what are the essential aspects of it. Uh, so let's do a quick introduction of our interface. Um, here we have um, some tabs on top. Uh, I have a bunch of plugins added to Grasshopper. Uh, for those of you that are launching Grasshopper for the first time, you may not see all of these plugins. Um, and all of them actually serve for a specific purpose. Uh, you don't need to memorize the location of each plugin. And if you want to look for something, you can either go through the tabs. For instance, if you want to do something curve related, you can go to the curve tab and you can find all the functions related to curves. Here we have surfaces, uh, mesh geometry, uh, intersections, transformations, uh, display and vectors um, these are lists and uh, sets and uh, mathematical operations and uh, these are the parameters so they will be uh, our basic containers um, now you can also find these in our canvas this is where we actually build our script uh, you can roll, zoom in zoom out and pan around this is a 2d environment and um, we can basically build uh, something here uh, by either uh, creating um, a, a plugin from the top down menu, or we can just double click and type in anything we want. For instance, if you want to create a point, we can type in XYZ uh, and find construct point. Um, and this is our basic point right here. So the point takes in X, Y, and Z as an input, and it outputs a point coordinate. Um, now let's say we want to uh, change these inputs. What we can do is create a number slider. If I double click here, I can type in number slider and find um, the number slider. So by default, it comes in between zero and one, and it has some floating values. Uh, but we can change this by right clicking on the slider and go to, um, edit and here I can rename the slider to be anything I want I can uh, change the rounding the digits let's make it integer I want the maximum value to be 20 and now I have a slider that goes from 0 to 20 and I'm going to put this in the X coordinate so you can see that our point is now moving along the X axis um, you can pretty much do copy and paste in Grasshopper. So if you want to make another copy of this point, you can simply copy and paste. It will slightly offset it. And uh, now I want to uh, create another parameter here for Y so that we can draw a line between those two. 
um, but I already have some built relationship here. You can see that these um, are basically how we connect uh, values or parameters. So this is um, basically if you go to these white dots, that's basically where you can um, grab this relationship and then attach it to another slider. And same thing happens with the outputs as well. And if you want to break these, you can simply right click here and go to disconnect and break the input. Uh, I'll do that for Y as well. And let's say this is uh, moving along the Y axis. And you can also have parameters that actually uh, function for two of the inputs. So you can, these can actually go in multiple, uh, multiple ways. For instance, let's say I want to create um, a Z value. Let's say that's going to be five. I can double click and type in five. And I want this to be the Z value of this point as well as the Z value of this point. So now both of those points have moved up in the Z direction. And this slider now can, uh, is basically controlling the Z values of both of those points. Uh, you can rename your sliders uh, or the parameters or the plugins here. You can right click here, type in A, uh, and let's say this is going to be B. And I'm going to double click and type in line. Uh, so we want to create a line between these two points uh, that takes in A and B. Uh, these don't need to be renamed A or B to be input here. It's just to show you uh, the, these can be named at anything actually. It's just the way the inputs actually work. Now, uh, one thing you will notice is that um, we have uh, some visualization here. Basically, we have um, uh, we have the uh, both points and the line, and this is what we uh, basically see when we are building these plugins. So the point actually, uh, when I click on any of these geometries, when I highlight them here, they would also be highlighted in green in Rhino. So you can actually uh, find what that um, part of the code is executing and what kind of output it's actually generating. So this is very essential to actually debug your code. For instance, if you want to just isolate any of these geometries, you can simply grab a portion of your script, uh, go to solution and preview selected off. That will actually turn off uh, those geometries and we will be only seeing the line. And all of these relationships are still parametric. So if I change these parameters, uh, our line will be changed as well. I'm going to turn on the points and um, that's basically um, the simplest um, script you can actually build in uh, Grasshopper. So uh, we have created um, a line between two points. Now we're going to do um, a few other things. L let's look at some of the inputs. For instance, um, uh, we can actually use these geometry containers to input geometry from Rhino. So if you go to the uh, geometry container, we have points, vectors, circles, boxes, um, basically any type of primitive geometry that we can find. So let's choose point and drop it to the canvas. You can also type in point and that will be this. Uh, it's a collection of three-dimensional uh, points. So you can notice that it's actually coming in as orange, which means um, this is doesn't currently have any geometry or data inside of it. And if we want to um, link anything from Rhino, let's say uh, we want to create a bunch of points um, and I want to input them to this container, I can actually select all of them, right click to the container and choose set multiple points. That will actually link these points uh, to the script. So these can now be used as an input. Uh, and we can actually move them uh, because they're anchored to the location of that 3D geometry. This is uh, a bit different than these parametric points, which are virtual. Um, this container now stores the location of these three Rhino objects. So it's reading X, Y, Z values from those. And if you want to, let's say, create a polyline between those points, you can simply feed them in as vertices. And now these points have been uh, traced and connected. And if you want to close them, 
And a polyline has this option where you can close the polyline and it's taking in a boolean. A boolean is basically a binary condition. It could either be true or false. So if you double click here, type in boolean, uh, we have a boolean toggle. Just consider this as a switch, um, like true, it can only be true or false. By default, uh, polylines are not closed, so it takes in false, but when we make it true, it will connect the last point to the first point. And if I move these objects, um, that will update the polyline basically. And if I turn on, turn off the Boolean, it will disconnect the ends. So uh, that's how you can link geometries. We can actually link a bunch of things, surfaces, circles, uh, curves, uh, but uh, I want to stick with uh, points for the introduction so that we are actually dealing with simple geometries. Um, so next up is actually, um, I want to get into um, panels and lists. So uh, let's say we want to create a row of uh, points. How do we actually achieve that? So um, remember we have construct point X, Y, Z. Um, so X, Y, Z basically takes in X, Y, and Z values. And we can also supply multiple values here. Uh, for instance, let's assume that we have a panel and I'm going to right click to the panel and choose um, multi-line data and now I can actually supply some values. Let's say 0, 1, 3, 5. Um, actually, let's make it a Fibonacci series. 1, 2, 3, 5, um, 8, 13. So these are my values. You can see that they're actually stored as a list. Uh, by default, the first item comes in at the index of zero. Uh, so here we have a list of seven items and these are the indices. So um, I'm going to connect this to X and you can see that the X now takes in seven values. Y takes in a single value and Z takes in a single value, but the output is seven points. So uh, what's happening is that um, all these values uh, get matched up with the corresponding Y and Z value. But if we don't have the same number of Y and Z, um, it will actually take in whatever value there is uh, with the corresponding X value. So now we get uh, basically seven uh, values here. Another way to do this um, would be, uh, I mean, you can enter these values multiple manually, but you can also actually create um, series. Um, a series is basically um, a sequence of values. It's actually located under set sequence. So if you go here, series is located here. And by default, um, it comes in with some values. So it starts with zero, goes to um, goes one step at a time and ends at 10. and we have um, 10 values total. So um, what I'm going to do is, let's say, supply a number slider 20, and let's make this the count. So now we have series here. Let's actually generate a panel to visualize what the output values are. So you can see these are the values that we output. Um, let's change the starting value to be 5 and let's change the step size to be 2. So the series is pretty um, pretty controllable. You can actually change these inputs and you can see we have now created a series that starts at 5 and step size is 2 and we can create as many values as we want. Now I'm going to connect these to the Y value of this point container and you can see that we get um, now values, uh, y values here. And we can also make them um, go at zero. Um, well, these are the um, basic essential uh, tools. So basically we can create series, uh, series of values. Um, we can also uh, basically access any type of uh, items from these lists because it's actually outputting lists of values. So here we have, for instance, eight points. Let's say I want to get um, a value from this list. Let me actually turn these off so that they won't confuse us. Uh, 
So let's say I want to get uh, some value. I'm going to first show you the list itself. So I'm going to create a point list. This goes in here and this goes in here. So this would be um, basically um, how we can display the each value um, at the index. So remember that we start at zero for the first value. So the zero index represents the point uh, that is zero five zero. And if I connect this to list item, list item is located under sets lists list item. These functions allow us to actually access data in a list. Um, I'm going to uh, I can now choose an an item using this index. So for instance, let's grab the item at the fifth index. So I can supply five. And you can see um, that item is actually chosen right there. So I'm going to create a sphere where that is so we can actually see it better. So fifth index retrieves the fifth item, the fifth point where we are drawing a sphere. And I can actually uh, change the index where we uh, where we can claim the point and when the indices are exhausted it actually returns to the beginning of the uh, of the list because the wrap index is uh, true um, if this were false now it won't give me any item at index 10 because there are no 10 elements inside of this list uh, so that's essentially um, how list item works um, now I want to uh, show you uh, a few more things. Uh, another one is um, uh, basically we have a bunch of operators here. For instance, we can do addition, multiplication. Let's do a simple uh, function here. For instance, um, let's do three. Um, let's do addition. Three plus uh, four is seven. And we can do multiplication. Let's say three times seven is going to be 21. So we can do all these operations. Uh, there is also an expression um, that we can control. Uh, basically, we can write a custom evaluate function here, but I'm not going to get into that yet. Um, I also want to show you we can also um, uh, let's create a range. Range is similar to a series here. Um, but what's different is that it takes in a domain and a number of steps and it segments it. So I can actually create a panel here. And let's say we want to have 10 values. And the domain is between 0 and 1. And let's say we want to bridge it in four steps. So it will actually divide the domain into the necessary steps. And this domain is basically an interval. It's specified between 0 and 1. Uh, we can actually construct one. So if I go to domain, construct domain, and now we can specify a starting value and an ending value. Let's say our domain is going to be between 2 and 20. And if I feed this in, you can see that the interval is fixed, but this basically divides the interval up into the increments. And this is a bit different than the series. This series actually taken three parameters. It's more of an additive, open-ended process, um, whereas range is domain specific. So it's bounded and it's segmented. Now, the last thing I want to do is create a grid, a two-dimensional grid. Uh, so let's quickly get into that. I'm going to take in um, two values. Let's actually get our range and the series here. Um, so we have a series of values. So let's consider them to be um, the x value of our points and these to be the y value of our points. Um, now let's see what happens. So here we have in the series coming in eight values but in the range we get nine values. So by default, we get one more than the step count. And you can see here that uh, X is taking in eight values, this is taking nine values, Z is only taking one value. And the 
eight values get matched up with the first eight values of y values, but the ninth value doesn't get any other x. So what happens is it gets matched in to the last value. So if I were to, uh, for instance, increase this, you can see it's repeating the last x value for the remaining y values in the, um, in the later uh, indices. Um, so in order to create the grid, uh, what we need to do is actually cross-reference these two. Uh, so if you type in cross-reference, um, what this does is it basically takes in two sets of values and creates um, a two-dimensional uh, cross-reference uh, between them so that these values will be distributed along the x and y and they will be multiplied according to these numbers. Um, cross-reference is located under set lists and uh, cross-reference right here. So if I take in this A value and this B value and supply the A and B, and now we can get a custom uh, grid sampled uh, using this logic. Now I can actually increase the step size for the X because this series is controlling the X value. And I can also control how much I want to stretch it along the vertical dimension. And um, these points can be actually used for a bunch of things, right? So if I were to, for instance, place um, a cylinder, and now we have actually um, 88 points. We have two, four, six, eight, and 11 values. So a total of 80, 88 points are generated using the script. And we can actually place a cylinder at each one of them. And let's say we wanna use a constant radius value and a constant height for all of these. So there you have it. Now we have created um, a row of cylinders um, by using these, um, these codes here. So we can actually um, change these parameters and you can see that the number of cylinders are changing. We can add more, we can subtract more. We can actually start at different values. Uh, we can start at the origin maybe. Uh, we can change the uh, step size as well. And that's essentially how we can create um, or build these sorts of more complex relationships and build them bottom up. So all these uh, relationships actually get fed in, um, fed into the, this uh, part of the script. And now we can output this uh, basically. If I cap these cylinders and bake them, now you can see that we have actually output uh, not one, but a lot more cylinders using this script. So um, that's basically some of the fundamental concepts behind parametric modeling in Grasshopper. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this introduction.